Kerry here with another Exos Heroes video. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down if FC Brock is worth it, about FC Diva and her event, and a few other game updates that have been happening in the game. It's just a whole bunch of stuff going on in the game right now that doesn't really deserve its own video, but I still wanted to touch on. So with that, let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is FC Brock worth it? And short answer, I think no. I don't think it's worth it for most people. But a few caveats, a couple things I want to explain. First thing is he's a blue fake core, which means he's giving stats, like bonus stats to your wasted red uh, units. And let, let's bring those up. So the best way I've found how to bring these characters up is just here. And then you can go to the, the wasted red recruit here for builder seals. I recommend not doing that, but you can at least pull this up and see the characters. And you kind of get an idea of which characters are wasted red. Like so uh, key one being like Garf, you know, Brock, of course. Sabrina, Sabrina, Annie. Like the, there's a few good characters in he, in here that are wasted red that would get uh, that would take advantage of the stat boost from Barack. It's just like this passive stat boost uh, right out. And then there's a person that showed a picture. Something that I think is interesting. So here's the stat boost you can see here uh, at the bottom, which is two percent one two percent for combat power, one percent for attack. 6% for HP and then 1% for defense, which in my opinion doesn't seem like much. But when you fuse them though, you know, it actually gets kind of crazy if you get really lucky, or it could be anywhere from like the HP is like, you know, 11.4 to 31%. That's a massive boost. Like fusing him is a big deal. But I just think overall, like th them making him a blue fake core, and we go back here to the recruit, they made him a 28 uh, pity timer, which I think is. Really annoying. I, I don't like that they did that. I wish that if they're going to have a separate one from gold, at least make it, you know. I, it just seems like a cheap way to last minute boost up the pity timer and it's just kind of frustrating. I just think if it because then my next thing is like, OK, don't make it like a gold. Make it don't make it um, 28, make it like something else. But I still think anything other than 19 is just unfair. In my opinion, it's just such a small boost, except unless you fuse them. And if you fuse them, like then it, I think it's actually a pretty massive boost. But then that also assumes you have Garf because imagine like 20 percent, like you're not like super lucky. But like, let's say imagine like 20 percent extra health on a Garf uh, straight up just from this passive. I think that's crazy. So, so with all that being said, I think for most people, I do not think going for him is worth it. The exception would be like, let's say you, you're just starting to play the game. You missed out on a lot of the dragon characters already. You don't have that many. Like, let's say you don't have rare, you don't have Xeon, you don't have Anastasia and you have all that starting game zest, or maybe you're like a small spinner that just started, then Baraka might be worth it. Uh, but for most people, no, I don't think he's worth it. And so with that, let's talk about the D.Va event that's going on, the core fiesta. Okay. So we have the Diva Fusion event going on right now where you get a you, know, you do all these emissions and then you're going to finish with Diva. So before I wanted to get into that, I want to talk about what I think of Diva. And I think Baycore Diva is actually a really good character. So but before her buff uh, that they gave her, I think she was actually pretty bad. So she had a couple things going for her, but overall she wasn't that great of a character. Then they buffed her. And I think she's actually really great. So the first thing is really important about her is that she has Dragon Hunter Blessing. So she's one of the four characters in the game that has this ability here where you're going to do uh, so on phase two on the days where the dragon does not have a guardian stone she'll do a lot of damage there whereas that that's the phase where most people hit for like very little damage she's actually going to hit for a ton of damage and before her modifiers are really low i forget specifically on how much she hit for on this move on her a2 here but now she hits for 700 percent, which is crazy and then I would use her also for challenges. I think she's like pretty decent for, for machine challenges. Machine is a pretty tough day. I, I think it's probably the hardest day for challenges. So just another character that's actually pretty good for that day is important. So overall, I think it's a machine day character, a character for, you know, like the dragon on Friday, Saturday. I think now she's actually in the running. She's probably competitive with FC Brook. I would say she's probably better than FC Brooke. I, I like FC Brooke because she's tanky because of this barrier of will. Why I'm comparing Brooke and her is because they're both characters with Dragon Hunter Blessing. I'm a big fan of barrier of will. So you're going to have the, your top four characters under like a dragon passive. And then she can be another damage dealer that has this barrier of will here where you can rely on her survivability. Big thing about her, though, is that she doesn't have very much critical hit on her own. So she's not going to do that much damage unless you start to put like faded gear on her. Uh, it, it's actually like weirdly low. I think she's probably third 
And then you got Karina is another character that is in that running. And so I think those two are pretty competitive in this spot now that they've buffed Diva and made her actually do some damage. Now let's talk about her actual event on how to get her. Here's the requirements for completing the event to actually get FC Diva. Big thing though is I think it's really important to look at look in advance. A nice thing about this event, you have seven days of events, but then they give you, I want to say they give you like 14. So right now we're on day 12, three hours remaining. Nice to make sure you're going to do things on time because there's going to be certain things that if you don't do them every single day, you're not going to really give yourself that much uh, leeway. Like if you do them as the days go, it, you could really put yourself in a bind where you're going to be needing to play literally every single day from that point forward. Um, one thing I, I wanted to address is this chat thing. This it seemed bugged for me, but I figured it out. But it is is like I've tried chatting in the normal system, like just talking to a friend. I've tried talking in my alliance. I, I've tried all that. But the thing that actually worked for me was if I go here and then I chatted in here and then it worked. So if, if people have been having issues with that, be sure to if you're sure to hit that, then that that's what it unlocked it for me. Maybe it's bugged. I don't know. But I tried everything else. Didn't work. Then I just did this and it worked. Like, I, I mean, like right before I started recording. So uh, that's what it ended up working for me. OK, and then one thing I noticed is these hero battles, like these hero challenges. So be sure to be doing those. Like, that's one thing that as I'm looking at this, definitely want to be doing well in advance so you don't miss out because this is going to be one of the big ones where it's only a daily thing if you don't do it within a couple days you're just going to be out of luck a lot of times when it comes to the actual answer for these hero challenges i see them on reddit they're usually not too bad uh, but it is kind of nice to just be able to quickly do it because someone already figured it out uh, figured it out and posted it on reddit another big one is going to be disassembling heroes normally i sell extra heroes instead of disassembling them so make sure you keep that in mind here's another interesting one too is you need to make sure you're you're crafting the power of wings at door creation and how you get that is through you're going to need to make sure you're in an air squadron and then instead of donating your stuff what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take it and then go to the door creation and actually craft it so what you're going to end up wanting to do is instead of you're going to want to be taking 30 of these guys and then crafting them so looks like i only have 40 so we'll craft one here but uh, i me personally i've been getting in a habit of just straight up you know donating them like instantly whereas in this situation if you want to make sure you're going to get her definitely be saving all of them in crafting and getting the levy stones instead of donating to your clan and then now we can go back and then it's going to actually like record that progress so craft power wings adore creation and now i'm one out of seven instead of most of it's pretty straightforward most of it if you're playing every day you're going to have these well completed well in advance but i think a couple of these things are going to be important to really plan for especially the hero challenges the hero challenges and the crafting the power wings at door creation those are going to be important and then this chat thing was kind of i was really hoping it wasn't bugged i'm glad that it at least worked for me hopefully uh going in that particular area right here works for you guys and then that's pretty much all i had to say about that event i think it's cool that they're doing this i think eva is a character that's good but not great fake core that is going to uh you know help uh, boost some accounts it's that right it's that perfect like power level where it's something where i would expect them to yeah, yeah. She, she's not like too crazy strong like i expected someone around this uh how good she is is pretty typical for something like this event in these kind of games. So it makes sense that they would do it for her. And I'm glad that they're allowing something guaranteed for, for people's accounts like that. More of that, the better. Now that we got that out of the way, look, there's a couple of things I want to talk about when it comes to the embodiment of Avarice that I have no idea where to put it in a video. So I'm just going to put it at the end of this one. All right. Embodiment of Avarice. So I want to show you guys what happens is after you unlock see that you actually get this whole robe down here i want to show this off specifically because it could be confusing and i just wanted to actually test it so what i've been actually doing is to get to this point is i actually just moved all my faded gear like i paid for the the zest to move it all over to have all these characters high enough to actually hit c and then i after the battle then what happens is this unlocks so then what i'm going to be testing is why i'm doing this is i wanted to test to see if once you unlocked it for this this day so i unlocked it for frost yesterday then i unlocked it for nature today and then uh, next week i'm going to go back and see that do i need to have two million power level for this is this like grayed out or is this just now unlocked period 
because the only reason why I was able to hit this is by moving all the faded gear over here to just barely hit it for these these characters. So also also I want to show that just how important this is because this is how you're going to snowball. And then next week, for example, you're going to be competing against people that have all this unlocked, you know, like this unlocked, and then they'll be able to snowball and then they actually have a potential to hit, you know, the A unlock if they get, you know, their next wave of characters up there. So it's just going to be this never ending snowball for people that are really investing in their embodiment of avarice. And then the rewards you get, uh, I wanted to talk about that. So I've been getting these Orb of Manas. These Orb of Manas, have, I, I've been wondering about these for a while, and I finally had enough to actually do one of the enhancements on a, a piece of gear. So let me show you that. Uh, the results were incredibly underwhelming. Like, look, look at this. This is crazy. So five. So not only did it took, I get two drops. So I, I have two million power. I get two drops per attempt in the embodiment of avarice. It took three days of gearing or three days of embodiment of avarice. The only place in the game to get orb of manas, except disassembling a faded piece of gear. And then so it takes five, five. Let, let me show you a piece before I do this. So I don't spoil it. Okay. So like, let's say I go here, magic enhancement. You're looking at this and then it, it's showing this. You need, you need um, five of them. And then it's going to add an extra stat. It explains it here, magic enhancement. And then stats of a six, uh, six star legendary faded equipment includes weapons that have reached maximum level are added and changed using aura, mana, and gold. The aura, mana, and gold requirements depend on how many enhances have been applied. The stat is added slash changes chosen at random out of attack, defense, health, critical damage, speed, luck, defense. Uh, yeah. And so then they explain exactly how much you can gain. And it's all there for you. It's just, I guess, when you actually see it in action, it's pretty underwhelming. So then now that we kind of get an idea of what this is, I come over here. I was like, okay, I'll go to Bathory and then try to enhance the gear. So here you get this little effect here, knowing that you actually enhanced it, this little blue diamond and got a whopping three defense, three entire defense. That's it. Unbelievable. 